son. Now that's a love. That's who she want to get to. I'm always looking forward to it. You know, she had a horse and buggy, and she believed that there should be no discrimination whatsoever in this country. So whenever she saw somebody and they would want to be sitting in the back, she said, come on up to the front. <laughs> and. Uh, when the women were given the right to vote, that was uh, in 1920. <clears throat> I jumped it with her in the horse and buggy. And we had a buggy. Do you know what a buggy is? Mm, not really. That's, what, that's what one of the questions he was asking me in the car. He said, now did they have cars during that time period? I said, I say ask her that. Ask her about yes. when they had cars and radios and we had radios, and they would act up half of the time with a whole lot of uh, of snow or a whole lot of uh, of growling. And, but it wasn't um, it wasn't the kind you have now that you can softly see or hear anything that was going on. My father had a car. Mm. He had a Model T Ford. Wow. One of, one of uh, the first cars of Henry Ford. Mm. And she didn't want to drive. I guess she was afraid. So she considered, considered and had that he considered getting my mother a horse and buggy. Mm. And the buggy, have you ever seen a wagon? Yeah. Well, the buggy is, it has four wheels on it, but it's straight up just like a car, just a straight up. And it seats, that one seated two people. And uh, <clears throat> that's what you call a buggy. And we would go to people's houses, and I would get out of the car and knock on doors and ring doorbells. And then I would, she would, these people who were women would come out and get in the car, in the horse and buggy, and we would take them to the place where they could register. Then when people came and they had to go to the polls, we would go back again and pick those people up and take them down mm. so they could register. There weren't many. And this was the first time that African Americans, white people, brown people, any people could have registered and voted because women couldn't register and vote in those days. Wow. So that's where I got my inspiration from that a hopeless people is a voteless people. Mm. And then I will be able to help these people that they won't be hopeless. And they're hopeless now. Mm. When people don't register and vote, we're coming back to the place where white people would do anything they want to do. Mm -hmm. That's what they did before, until we got the opportunity to register mm. and vote. And I was, you had to be 21 years old. And I was a registered voter at 21 years of age. Mm. So it was, it, it, it was something I wanted to do. After I left my people's home and I worked, <coughs> and I worked for 27,000 people in the rural district. I wanted them, all of them who could register and vote, to be able.
to go down to the registration office to try to register, to try to vote, because you have to register first before you can vote. And the thing about it is, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever told you that, but when they first have had the precincts, and a, a preset is a section that is designated around the district. <clears throat> and um, nobody wanted to go to the courthouse. Mm -hmm. No. And this is when they were registered. Mm -hmm. Black people registered, white people registered. Mm -hmm. When Columbus got money from Isabella, who was the Queen of Spain, he was to go to China to get tea, because that was one of the big things that uh, they used in those days. <coughs> but instead, he got lost. And they were all drunken people, many of them, and many of, them, of the people who were working with them were outside, were people that drank. <coughs> and he lost his way. And when he lost his way, he came up in Canada, in America. And when he got back, he went on down around Florida and up through the islands. And when he got back to Isabella, he said, I saw some red people there. And they were red, they weren't like us. Mm -hmm. And then I saw some black people there. And those black people were big and husky and strong. And they would, uh, they, they are good enough to work on the fe in the fields. <clears throat> Columbus didn't discover America. We were here. And the Africans, and they exchanged what they got and what they knew and the way they, they grew their crop and whatnot. So he didn't discover anything because we were there first. He just got but a they, word. They won't tell you that. Mm -hmm. The reason why is they want you to hang your head down and say, well, we were enslaved. They were enslaved too. Every nationality that came up were enslaved. enslaved yes. And I'll tell you another thing. They're enslaved today. Mm. First thing, we are on the pinnacle and we are troubled. But what is worse than that is, how many of them you find that they, somebody has a mortgage on their house? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many of them use the credit cards? Mm -hmm. They're enslaved to just about everything that you can think of. Mm -hmm. They don't even own themselves. Mm -hmm. and they're enslaved they, by their own ignorance, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that goes for white and black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what do you think so far, young man? I think this is a blessing that I get to experience this and witness just all of the holiness in the air. It's just, it is. It's just really amazing. It is. Excellent description. You feel it. You really do. And what do you think, Daddy, about Mrs. Amelia <sighs> Boynton Robinson up to this point? It's too much to comprehend. Um, the closest thing I can say is this is like meeting Dr. King, Malcolm X, Medgar Evers, Rosa Parks, all in one. And, and, and I mean that because her knowledge, all of their lives, except for Rosa, their lives were taken early. So we didn't see them fully develop with the, with, they had so much more wisdom. I mean, these men died in their early 40s. So now we're getting to see, this is like seeing Malcolm and Martin and, and Medgar develop till they're 100 years old and then to see the wisdom behind her thought process right now. Um, there is no way you can convince me this person is anything under 65. You can't convince me she's over the age of 65. Her mind is sharp. 
her heart, her compassion. She loves her people, but also she loves all people. And she recognizes that we're all together as one. So it, it's too much to comprehend. It, it really is. I could not say what this means to me. And it, it would take me 10 hours to exp explain what I just witnessed upstairs and meeting her for the first time. Amazing. And it's a godsend for you, Brother Frazier, to allow me to uh, be in her presence. Thank you.